and welcome to X-ray Review. In this video, we're going to look at the pleural effusion on X-ray, one of the earliest radiographic signs of pathology in the lungs. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So a pleural effusion is the abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pleural space, which is the potential space between the visceral and parietal pleura. Fluid in this space can result from a variety of causes like heart failure, infection, malignancy, and trauma. All right, so let's first review what a normal chest x-ray should look like. These are the costophrenic angles. They should be sharp, well-defined, and free of any fluid. When we look at the contours of the diaphragm, the right hemidiaphragm is usually higher than the left due to the heart pushing down on the left side. The lung field should appear radiolucent without evidence of opacification or fluid lines. So keep this in mind as we move into pathology where you'll see the lungs have a different, more sinister appearance. So now let's look at the key radiographic signs of a pleural effusion. So the first thing I'm looking for on an x-ray is blunting of the costophrenic angle. This is usually the earliest sign. Even 200 to 300 milliliters of fluid could blunt the posterior costophrenic angle. So on the frontal view, you'll see the lateral costophrenic angle become hazy or obliterated. Second, I'm looking for the meniscus sign. As more fluid accumulates, you'll see a concave upward meniscus that tracks up the lateral chest wall. This occurs because fluid follows gravity in the surface tension in the pleural space, creating the classic meniscus sign. Third, you may see opacification of the hemithorax. With a large effusion over 1,000 milliliters, you may see complete whiteout of the affected hemithorax and sometimes a mediastinal shift away from the effusion if it's under tension. Fourth, you may see layering on a lateral decubitus view. So when a patient lies on their side for a decubitus film, pleural fluid will layer out along the dependent chest wall. This is helpful in detecting small free flowing effusions and distinguishing them from loculated collections. There are two major types of pleural effusions. You could have a transudative effusion, which is usually due to systemic factors like congestive heart failure or cirrhosis. Or exudative effusions caused by local factors like infection, malignancy, or pulmonary embolism. And don't forget the radiographic appearance is determined by how much fluid is present and the position of the patient. So let's take a look at a few radiographic pitfalls that make interpreting pleural fusions more challenging. First is a loculated effusion. This is often seen in empyema or malignancy. They can appear as a biconvex or lenticular opacity that doesn't shift with position, making it look like a lung mass or consolidation. So basically this mimics what a tumor of the lungs could look like. Second is a hydropneumothorax. This is where you get the combination of air and fluid in the pleural space. You'll see this horizontal air fluid level on upright films, unlike the meniscus sign of a pure effusion as we see here on the left. And third, we want to be able to tell the difference between a massive effusion versus an atelectasis. So in a massive effusion, you'll see a large effusion pushing the mediastinum away, in contrast to a lobar collapse or atelectasis, where you'll see the mediastinum being pulled towards the opacification. So always consider the clinical context. So to summarize, here are the top findings of pleural effusion. First, we're going to look for blunting of that costophrenic angle, where you see that sharp costophrenic angle here on the top. On the bottom, you could see the blunting of the costophrenic angle and meniscus sign with the lateral tracking of that fluid up the chest wall. 
there may be opacification of the hemithorax and in large effusions it will push the mediastinum away from its normal position there may be layering on the lateral decubitus view and then don't forget about the pitfalls like the loculations that look like tumors air fluid levels or massive volume effects and these features will help you not only identify pleural fusion but also estimate the volume determine mobility and suggest possible causes so let's look at a few more examples of pleural fusion here in the right middle and lower lung field you can see a large opacification and blunting of the costophrenic angle with the meniscus sign here's another example showing poor visualization of the left costophrenic angle due to pleural effusion and one more in the left lung field you could see poor visualization of the left costophrenic angle and opacification of the lower lung field all right so let's go through a few cases here and see if any of this stuck is there a pleural effusion present on this image and yes there is a pleural effusion in the left lower lung field with blunting of the costophrenic angle and meniscus sign question number two is there a pleural effusion present on this image And yes, you should be able to see blunting of that left costophrenic angle, which is full of fluid indicative of a pleural effusion. Question number three, is there a pleural effusion present on this image? And no, there is not. This is a normal chest x-ray and you can clearly see the costophrenic angles. They are sharp and clear of fluid. And last question, is there a pleural effusion present on this image? And yes, there is a large pleural effusion in this patient's left chest. Uh, causing opacification of the entire lung field. All right, well, thanks for making it this far. I appreciate you listening. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to put those below. If you have any ideas for topics, things like that, feel free to drop them in. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again.